In an earlier video, which is linked above, I rebuilt a wheel using some pre-used stainless steel spokes. In this video, I'll carry out an engineering analysis of those spokes to determine whether it's safe in terms of their long-term reliability to reuse these pre-used spokes. Unless you're very ham-fisted when tensioning spokes, and I'll cover spoke tension in a future video, or you have an accident, the most likely cause of spoke failure will be metal fatigue. Metal fatigue is a non-reversible weakening of the material when it's subject to repeated fluctuating stress. There are two main phases, crack initiation and crack propagation. Because there's not much material for a crack to propagate through, spoke fatigue is dominated by crack initiation. Bicycle spokes can accumulate metal fatigue as they are loaded and unloaded while the wheel is rotating during use. Engineers use diagrams like this, SN curves, in order to evaluate fatigue life. If the evaluation falls on or above the curve, the component will fail. If the evaluation falls below the curve, the component will remain in one piece. Details of the SN curve will depend on the material's composition and its processing. In this diagram, the SN curve exhibits an endurance limit. Not all materials exhibit an endurance limit, but most steels do. If the applied stress range is lower than the endurance limit stress, fatigue cracks will never initiate and the component can receive an infinite number of cycles without fatigue failure. I selected this particular diagram because the SN curve and the endurance limit of this particularly old stainless steel is low by modern standards. However, this diagram is useful as any assessment using it will be conservative. I'll start with the experimental data I already have. Those data are from the spokes that I am reusing. Assuming that the spokes undergo one load cycle for every revolution of the wheel, we can calculate how many load cycles each spoke has already experienced. Working through the numbers, we can determine that each of the spokes has undergone about 12 million load cycles. If I overlay this onto the SN curve, you can see that the number of cycles applied to the spokes exceeds the number of cycles associated with the endurance limit. As there were no spoke failures, we can infer that the stress range falls below the endurance limit and therefore the spokes will have infinite life. However, I'm a belt and braces sort of engineer, so I'll also look at this from the perspective of the stress range. I'll have to make some assumptions. First of all, the fatigue loading is taken by just eight spokes. As for that load, the total mass of the bike and rider is 120 kilograms, and this all acts through one wheel. I'm going to assume that the stress concentration, be that at the head end or the nipple end of the spoke, of three. When calculating the fatigue life, we ignore the build or the average tension in the spokes. If you do the calculations, and I have, the pedaling and braking forces are quite small. Also, the number of load cycles is much lower, and it's for these reasons that I have ignored both pedaling and braking. With those assumptions, I can now calculate the total maximum stress range in the spokes, which comes to 132 newtons per millimeter squared. If I overlay this onto the SN curve, the stress range is below the endurance limit. As with the experimental data, the analysis suggests that the spoke life is infinite. I wanted to know if the pre-used spokes would cause reliability issues. I focused on metal fatigue as this is the most likely cause of failure. I assessed this using two approaches. The natural experimental data suggests the spoke stress was below the endurance limit for the material. An admittedly rather crude stress analysis also confirmed this. Both approaches suggest that the spokes will have infinite fatigue life, and hence it is safe for me to reuse the pre-used spokes. However, this was for the spokes that I was reusing. If this result is to have broader significance, there are some discussion points and caveats to cover. I mentioned earlier that different materials and processing would produce different SN curves. Over the years, material processing quality has improved. 
For instance, modern stainless steels are less likely to contain microstructural defects, which can encourage crack initiation. These modern materials have better properties, including higher fatigue lives and higher endurance limits. Unfortunately, with the reputation of these older spokes made of older materials still lingers, and it besmirches the good quality spokes made from modern materials and with modern processing. I suspect, or rather know, that the quality of the hubs, and to some extent the rims and nipples, will also have an influence on spoke reliability. So there are reasons why one would want to use new components, particularly spokes. However, there is a reason you might want to actively use pre-used spokes. Pre-used spokes, assuming they haven't caused any problem, will have been proof tested and therefore will have proven reliability, whereas new spokes are an unknown quantity. Even good quality manufacturers can make the odd bad spoke or bad batches of spokes. Of course, even if you use good quality spokes, there's always the chance of failure as fatigue is statistical in nature. There's always the chance that a material will have a microstructural defect in the wrong place or localized damage that will initiate a crack. Having said that, I haven't had a spoke fail in well over five years. And even then, those spokes failed because I broke a gear hanger and the gear changer went into the spokes and damaged them, causing some of them to break a few weeks later. Nothing, not even good quality spokes, are perfect. Obviously, these calculations have been made for stainless steel, and so they don't apply to aluminium alloy or more modern carbon fibre spokes. If your use case is much more severe than normal road cycling, like downhill mountain biking for instance, then these results may not apply to your situation either. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, or preferably both. If you did, you'll find a Buy Me A Coffee link in the description. Also, if you can spare a second or two, please give this video a thumbs up as that really helps the channel out. If you would like me to make more engineering based videos, let me know in the comments. And here are some of my other bike engineering videos for you to take a look at. Finally, if you have any comments, questions or additional information, feel free to voice them via the comments feed as well. From me, until next time, it's goodbye.